Hi, I'm Mark, and you're watching Mark's Astro Journey. Hey there, Mark with uh, Mark's Astro Journey. And I just wanted to share my experience of a lunar eclipse imaging fail. So first I'll talk about some of the things that went well. Um, one of the things that went really well is because I live with a lot of trees around my house, uh, thinking about the path the moon was gonna take across the sky, I didn't really have a clear path. So I asked around to my neighbors and my neighbor who owns the land around me who has, you know, cows on the fields. He said, well, you can just use, I've got a spot up on a hill here, you can use that. I never thought of even asking him in the past because usually there are cows there. So he said the cows weren't in the field and he'd take me up there to look at it to see what I thought. Went up there, his awesome spot. It's, it's probably 100 or 200 feet higher than where my house is located. And from that vantage point, there are no trees blocking your view. And you can see horizon to horizon, almost 360 degrees. So I knew it was a really good spot. So that went really well. Another thing that went well is I got, I got a laptop replacement. Um, I've been struggling with trying to use my six or seven year old HP laptop for astrophotography. <clears throat> and I don't, you know, I don't know what kind of equipment you have, but this laptop was getting very slow with everything. Like anything you want to do, start one of the programs, you know, Sharp Cap, PH22 Guiding, whatever the program might be, connect to something, um, try to plate solve, you know, all the different things, activities you might be doing just you know, taking forever. Sometimes it would lock up, had to restart it, the restarts were slow. So <clears throat> what I did is um, I finally broke down and I've been trying to avoid it because you know, it's so expensive. So I ended up, when I was looking at you know, astrophotography, it's pretty intense on the video side and the processor and memory side. So I ended up finding out, realizing that really gaming laptops are, are really well suited for this type of usage because they have a dedicated video card which has that dedicated memory for the video and the, the CPU and the RAM is usually a little beefier. So I ended up getting an Asus um, Rogue Zephyrus gaming laptop and uh, after using it already I can see it's like a world of difference. Everything is just snaps through and there's no no pausing, no, no hesitating or hanging on anything. The other thing that went well is I was able to take the following day off work because, you know, I mean, trying to image the lunar eclipse and it occurring in the middle of the night, you know, you're going to be, you know, wiped out the next day. So that's everything that went well. So what went badly or why do I call it a fail? Well, first of all, um, I went up on top of that hill. I kept watching the weather. You know, I was using the different apps I have that check like the scene conditions and the weather and the clouds and everything. And it was looking pretty good. You know, all of it was indicating it was going to be a pretty good night. Here, you know, I'm in, I'm in uh, southern Indiana in the U.S. So I waited until around 1.30 to go up there because, you know, I've, I've got a uh, Jackery portable battery and that's what I was going to take in my truck. I had the um, cigarette lighter adapter so you can charge it, run your vehicle, charge it and an extension cord just in case. But also I know there's a limit on that. You know that that usually that battery is going to last me like six, seven hours at the most before it gets pretty low. And I knew this was going to be like a four, a four hour or so potentially event. Um, so that's why I waited to 1.30. Well, by the time I got up there, you know, at 1.30 in the morning, 
And I looked around at the sky, and on the other side of the sky, where the moon had already risen from, totally clear. Not a cloud in the sky anywhere, crystal clear. But on the, the west side of the sky, there was this long band of clouds going all the way down the sky from north to south on the very western edge. And I thought, I had that thought that you often have when you think about doing an imaging session with astrophotography is, does this make sense to even invest the time? You know, because you get everything set up, you get started, and then by the time you get, you know, ready to go, then you notice, well, look, the clouds move the way you didn't think or they've started to progress the way you didn't want them to. And it ends up ruining your imaging session. So by the time I got everything set up, that wasn't the case, actually. The clouds were still over on the, you know, towards the horizon, but they still were going almost all the way across the western side of the sky. So I had a bad feeling at that point, and it, it ended up being a valid bad feeling. So by the time that it was time to start, you know, capturing images, I planned to start like, you know, the 3.30 time frame. I was setting up earlier than that, obviously. But to start capturing any images of the moon, I thought, you know, somewhere around 3-ish three, three to 3.30. And so um, by that time, that was, you know, an hour and a half to two hours later from when I went up there, the, the big band of clouds had moved over some more. I mean, they were still solid going down through the sky, but the moon was still, it looked like, you know, a couple hours or so away from reaching those clouds, depending on which direction they moved. And so... Um, the other thing that was, I guess, really a fail, it's kind of my fault, the weather you can't control, as we all know, but poor planning. So my work has been crazy lately. It's very hectic. It's been very overwhelming. And I didn't really have time to sit down and think about this and plan it properly. And that was a huge mistake. If you've not done uh, planned uh, recording imaging of a lunar eclipse and you don't plan properly you're gonna have a failure it's not gonna go the way you thought and I'll, I'll tell you the kind of things I'm talking about so there's no way you can for someone like me I don't have like you know a 20 terabyte or 30 terabyte external hard drive or something like that or that capacity I'm even on this new laptop I got it has one terabyte I do have like an external drive that's like um, you know two gigabyte or something, not two gigabytes, like a terabyte or something like that itself. So I do have like extra capacity, but I don't have unlimited storage capacity. So to give you an example of the challenge, if you haven't tried to do this before, you're not familiar with it. If you're new to it, people experienced already know all this. But so just to do a test after I got there, you know, then I realized I've got a plan. I've got a plan how I'm going to do this because this could go if the clouds allowed the weather allowed this was going to go to like after six you know six to seven in the morning and so we're talking about three to four hours of imaging and so i did a test and, I, and what i did is my my camera my uh, zwo camera was set for avi raw eight and a capture area of 5496 by 3672 that really for the moon for my setup you know that's in my telescope that's really you know what i had to stick with so what I ended up running into is that if, if you wanted to capture, I thought, or initially, I don't know why I was thinking this way. I was thinking, I'm not only going to want the AVI, the AVI to like use as a video, like a, to combine multiple short videos to get an overall video, since I can't capture the whole thing. For some reason, I started off thinking I might want to stack these images too. So I thought, well, I'll capture like, intervals a sequence you know that sharp cap has this capture sequence option i thought i'll capture like these intervals um you know leave like several minutes in between and i would capture like three minute this was in my brain for some reason i'd capture three minute intervals well no wrong you know with the storage capacity i had that was never going to work because three minutes at those settings i said was capturing 1752 frames and that was 35.36 gigabytes was the size of the AVI, AVI file created for one three-minute capture. So if you extrapolate that out, you can see very quickly 
you can't go for you know three or four hours if you do an in, even an interval between you know allowing like several a couple minutes or whatever to elapse between that there's no way I would run out of storage space so then what I did is I, I dropped that down and I said okay well I'll capture 20 second AVI those same settings 54 96 by 36 72 raw 8 um, I thought well I'll capture 20 seconds well what kind of file did that create 385 frames and 7.77 gigabytes so I calculated out and I thought okay that's a that's an amount of storage I can deal with if I did those like every five minutes so I thought I was set up I thought well that's good that that's something that'll probably work but that was also a mistake so there's two reasons that was a mistake it's not frequent enough so having that five minute interval between captures is way too long because you know after words trying to process those multiple AVI files it became obvious that you can discern the change in the progression of the eclipse much sooner than five minutes there you know the changes are occurring more often than that or more frequently so I think if I had to do that again you know it, it's another thing maybe someone's I'm sure there's YouTube videos and other you know documents on the web of what's the best interval to do that, you know, to leave between your captures. I think what I would actually do if I was gonna try it again is I would go with a much, I would even go with even a shorter capture. I might even go with like five seconds because if you think about it, even if it was only five seconds long, it getting 385 frames in 20 seconds, you'd still get, you know, probably close to 50 frames and maybe 40 something frames and if you're not really going to worry about stacking a lot of these images, I guess, you know, you could still do that with 40 frames. You know, I have that much volume for the lucky imaging side of it. But um, what my thought is, is even if you could only get a few frames and it was for five seconds, um, you could then combine all those captures you did of those five second um, captures which would give you a better, a smoother combined time lapse of the lunar eclipse. And you would see the true effect of the entire, you know, changes as they occurred. So that's definitely something I would do. I would probably decrease the interval quite a bit. You know, I went with five minutes. And so I would probably take that down to either every minute. I'm kind of thinking maybe if every minute might not be good either or 30 seconds something like somewhere between 30 seconds and maybe a minute to a minute and 15 seconds uh, as the interval that would you know wait in between and if you kept the you know the capture small like five seconds i think that the storage wouldn't be an issue you know you'd have to calculate that out as well well the other problem with my five minute interval even if you could still get a good perception of a smooth transition during the lunar eclipse by combining those multiple, you know, AVI files. The problem is that the clouds continued. So even though I had five minute intervals, what happened was the clouds started moving, getting closer and closer to the moon as, you know, the eclipse was occurring after, you know, it started the, the Earth's shadow started to cover the moon so during some of that portion before totality i was getting cloud cover like almost entire cloud cover there were breaks in it but those intervals or those captures that fell at those points were no good so i have gaps so when i combined everything together instead of having a five minute gap i might have a 10 minute gap or more based on what happened and so I think the other challenge with the um, capture sequence and these intervals and how the it's called length and sharp cap. So how many of those do you want to do in that capture sequence? I think I was doing something like 10 at a time. The reason I did that with the five minute interval is I was thinking, you know, I'm going to have to adjust the exposure, the gain in other settings as the Earth's shadow progresses in front of the moon and definitely when you get to totality you know you're gonna to have to adjust your settings 
or you're not going to get that nice view where you see that red color and you, you know you see the whole moon it's going to be hard to get a good image if you're not watching the settings to adjust them so that's another thing to consider is i guess you know you're going to want to adjust those settings and so you have to think about that as it goes along and monitor you're kind of watching and uh, the histogram and trying to you know you're, you're gauging like not only your image on the screen but primarily the histogram and trying to make sure that you're having a consistent capture right so those are all very challenging things so I did take all the AVI video that I captured I combined them together to create a time-lapse to at least show what I was able to capture of the lunar eclipse it's only the part leading up to totality because when totality was getting ready to happen the clouds totally covered the moon so there was no more imaging of the moon it was just a very dim spot in the clouds at that point and looking at the sky the clouds were moving kind of um, it looked like they were moving like you know north to south I'm not, I'm not sure turned around now but it did not look like there was going to be any let up the clouds went all the way to the horizon and they were going across and the moon was going that way and I was like okay my eyes is over um, maybe the next time there's a full lunar eclipse I'll get better weather so check it out um, if you have comments about your experiences um, capturing a lunar eclipse um, feel free to share them in the comments you know I've seen people stream this stuff that's another challenge I have I don't have like broadband internet um, I'm in the country and what I'm doing is I'm using my hotspots they're good hotspots but they have limitations you know most hotspots even if you get like a business level one it has like a cap and then they start charging you after that like maybe you can get you know 50 gigabyte or 100 gigabyte um, plan but once you go beyond that they charge you for every like you know two or three five gigabyte additional that you need so I can't really do streaming you know if I was going to do it from this location there'd be no way for me to do streaming I'd, I'd bust out my data plan really quick so you know that whole issue of not being able to capture like the entire length of it that's another dilemma as far as like storage and uh, I think that's why I probably most people treat it like time-lapse you know I've, I've done time lapses on my GoPro camera of the night sky and stars and other things and you know those those work really well but you know like a, an entire night if you time lapse the night sky on your GoPro the entire night might end up being a, a video that's like either 45 seconds to a minute and a half that's about all you get out of that but um, it does look very very smooth you know but you can't really like with a GoPro you try to photograph something like the moon during an eclipse it's it's horrible because the setting you know you the settings would have to be adjusted throughout the eclipse and in time-lapse mode on a GoPro you know it's you don't want to interrupt it you don't want to disturb it so you'd have to do multiple time lapses stop it interrupt it change the settings so that you could actually still see the moon as the eclipse progresses but anyways um, I'd love to hear your feedback I'm sure there are people you know out there who have a great like plan how they go about doing their imaging session of a lunar eclipse but I think um, in this experience it's my first one I didn't plan properly I think I learned a lot that um, would help me to better plan for one in the future now we just have to wait though I think it's like a year and a half or two years out before there's another full lunar eclipse. Clear skies.